Okay, so we're back and in this video we're gonna talk about logical equivalence or the laws of logic. So what we have here is we have a table full of uh, things that we have already learned, all the rules that we have uh, looked at in the past videos. And I really want to take a look at these two statements. Now let's call this statement S1 and this statement S2. Now, if you look at them directly right now, you can see that these two, they're exactly the same. So they're exactly the same. So when two statements, let's call them S1 and S2, two statements S1 and S2 are said to be logically equivalent. And this is the symbol for logical equivalence, S1, uh, double arrow, S2. They are called logically equivalent when statement S1 or statement 1, S1 is true, respectively false, and statement 2, S2 is true and respectively false. So when S1 is logically equivalent to S2, statements S1 and S2 provide the same truth values or truth, same truth tables because S1 and S2 have the same truth values for all choices of truth values for their primitive components. That's a mouthful, and you probably don't know what that means. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, well, I just stole this statement from my book, and I know that they write things like they're back in the 1800s. I don't know what the heck they're saying, but what I'm trying to say is, when your truth values are completely the same, such as, such as what we have here, then you could say that these two statements are logic equivalent, because we have 1 to 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. They're the same truth tables, and the primitive values, each of these components, they're the same as well. So that's what, uh, that's what we mean by logically equivalent. So the next thing we can look at is from this concept, we can express implication. And remember from what I taught you in the past videos that implication is just this arrow, right? So that's implication. We can express implication in terms of negation and disjunction. Now negation is this little gun symbol and disjunction is the or symbol which is an upside down carrot or a V. So that's what we have here. So we can express um, so we can express this implication in terms of negation and and uh, and disjunction. And these are logically equivalent. So I'll just show you how that's done right now. So let's have this. Let's fill, fill out this table. We start off with what we always start off with, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And when P implies Q, or well, zero, 0 implies 0, that is 1. Uh, 0 implies 1, that is 1. 1 implies 0, that's 0. 1 implies 1, that's 1. Now if you flip these around, flip Q, uh, flip it around so that Q implies P. Uh, so then we'll have 0 implies 0, that's 1. 1 implies 0, well that is just 0. Uh, 0 implies 1 is 1, and, uh, and 1 implies 1 is also 1. So now we have these two, two statements. And it's rather easy to just build up this statement, to use uh, this statement and have it connected to this second statement with and. So 1 and 1, that's 1. 1 and 0, that's 0. 0 and 1, that's 0. 1 and 1, that's 1. And then this um, this double arrow, I don't even remember what this is called. This biconditional, it's what's called a biconditional. We know, because I taught you in past videos, but if you look in the past videos, I've done a table with you where the biconditional of P and Q, what the respective truth values are, one zero zero one. So what we found here is these two statements are logically equivalent. The truth values are the same for each component. So it's just as simple as that. And we can break this down even more, right? Because I told you that P implies Q is equivalent to negation and disjunction, and that pretty much means that this P by conditional Q is pretty much logically equivalent to uh, neg negated p or so what we have here is negated p and q and 
and we negate q, uh, q or p. That is because uh, that is because this p implies q is biconditional, or no, it's logically equivalent to negated p and q. So we just swapped this for that, and similarly just swapped that for this. And these are two are logical equivalent. So that's all I want to teach you for today. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys again in the next video.